Amario and Papez are three of the 137 people who died in 30 mass killings in 2013. 2013, Isla Vista, California. Elliot Rogers kills six people and wounds 13 others. 2015, 358 mass shootings in America. In 2015, found that three quarters of the victims whose race could be identified were black. 2016, June 12th, Orlando, Florida. 50 people dead, including the gunmen, and more than 50 injured. Pulse nightclub. 2017, Las Vegas, Nevada. Killed 58. Injured over 800. The window from his room in the Mandalay Bay Hotel in Las Vegas. 2018, February 14th, Parkland, Florida. Suspect shoots at fleeing students after an alarm trigger. Murdered 14 people. Attempted murder of 14 more. 2019, August 3rd, El Paso, Texas. The shooter kills 22 people and wounds a further 24. The House also passed a reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, opposed by the NRA because of the bill's measure that seeks to prevent domestic abusers from obtaining guns. There have been 369 mass shootings so far this year in the United States, resulting in 8,802 deaths. As of August 2019, California had the most mass shootings in the United States, with 20 total shootings since 1982. Since 2000, police have stopped 277 active shooter incidents in the U.S. There are significantly more shootings in the U.S., which some think is due to the relatively lax gun control laws. Gun control laws in the U.S. are dependent on the state, and the right to own firearms is enshrined in the United States U.S. Constitution. Gun rights interests have given more than 43.8 million to candidates, parties, and outside spending groups since 1989, with 90% of the funds contributed to candidates and parties going to Republicans. The NRA is consistently the top contributing organization among gun rights groups. So this is how ghost guns, guns without a serial number, are turning up across California in record numbers. That's according to the gun-related news outlet The Trace. Officials say 30% of all guns recovered by agents in the state are ghost guns, meaning they can't be traced. In Ohio, believe it or not, an 18-year-old is accused of stockpiling more than two dozen guns, including an AR-15 and 10,000 rounds of ammo. Here's the thing, though. They arrested Justin Olson after he was accused of making posts about assaulting a federal law enforcement officer. And at 11, a Sacramento student expelled for bringing airsoft guns to school twice is now headed back to the classroom. The decision has the school district taking the county office of education to court. Bringing that to school, unacceptable. You know, that is not allowed. We don't tolerate that. That's a violation of a student's privacy. And that's irresponsible and inappropriate. This man shouldn't be in the position of authority. In today's society, it is never appropriate for a student of any kind to bring a firearm to school, plastic or not. Anyone and everyone knows how similar airsoft guns are to real guns. This is serious. It's a serious issue. The Natomas Unified School District voted to expel a student they say brought airsoft guns to school on two separate occasions earlier this year. They are toys, but to some, they can look like something else. These are uh, black guns. They're like metal. Um, they're a little heavy. They even have a clip that you can push a button and it comes out. The Sacramento County Board of Education overturned the district's decision, allowing the student to return to school at the start of the year. The Sacramento County Board of Education shouldn't be stepping in to defend the rights of a student who twice bought a fake gun to school. They should be stepping up for the rights of student safety. There are no rights to bring a gun to school. Natomas Unified filed a lawsuit in Superior Court today. They say the County Board of Education is overstepping its authority. We want to make sure and we're sending the message that this is not okay and we don't want this to become a pattern um, with the Sacramento County Office of Education Board. The district sent a letter to parents using the first name of the student and explaining the county's decision to overturn the expulsion and allow him back in school. The Be county says the letter Be doesn't tell the whole story. Common sense says student safety is more important than the Fourth Amendment. I think this guy should be working for the NRA, not the Sacramento County Board of Education. 
The Second Amendment does not apply here. The back to school lists are posted here at Heron School. And some parents tell us they're concerned about the student who is expelled being back in the classroom. From what I read, you know, I don't think the kids should be back in the school. And it looks like that they're letting someone back in who did something wrong and putting all of our children in jeopardy. In Atomas, Emily Maha, KCRA 3 News. What takes courage is to look a special interest group in the eye and say enough is enough. When the president gets a chance to speak out against gun violence, he says some ignorant crap like this. We must reform our mental health laws to better identify mentally disturbed individuals. Mental illness and hatred pulls the trigger, not the gun. Right, the gun didn't pull the trigger because that is physically impossible unless maybe it had one of its ribs removed. <laughs> But the gun did put the bullets into people. Mental illness did not. As far as we know, the El Paso shooter wasn't mentally ill at all. Being a racist monster isn't a mental illness. In fact, you can be one and be a very stable genius. <laughs> Painting mass shooters as mentally ill is unfair to the vast majority of mentally ill people who aren't stocking up on killing machines. It's a lazy assumption. It would be like if I assumed that you were all feeble-minded scrotes who could only manage an erection while stroking a gun. Stop <laughs> trying to make this problem more complex than it is. We know what causes mass shootings, and you do too. It's the gun, stupid, you know? <laughs> These shootings are because the president's racist rants and positive comments toward white supremacists. The man doesn't have the moral judgment or spine to shut down the NRA, do the right thing like they did in Europe, and ban guns. It's not the gun that pulls the trigger. It's the person holding the gun. I am convinced that Mitch wants to do something. He wants to do background checks, and I do too, and I think a lot of Republicans do. Add that lie to his nifty pack of hundreds. President telling the crowd in the wake of three mass shootings, including one here in Gilroy, California, he wants to focus on mental illness to prevent gun violence, not gun control. And in a one-on-one -on -one interview with our Her Sister Station, he said the chances of a compromise on background checks is remote. So we're looking at it right now. We're dealing with a lot of Republicans, very strong conservative Republicans, and we're coming up with a plan if we can. Uh, remember this, we have a lot of background checks already. Terrorism. We cannot keep America safe from this threat to the American people if we're not prepared to name it and confront it. Uh, we need an administration that is ready to do that, and we can't keep pretending that, that this is just random or that this is uh, something we can't confront. What you have here is two things coming together. One, one, the weak gun safety policies of this country, and two, the rise of domestic terrorism inspired by white nationalists. We need to acknowledge that this is a problem, that American lives are at risk, and we got to do something about it. At least one of the other Democratic presidential candidates, Beto O'Rourke, has said that President Trump and his rhetoric bear some responsibility for the acts of this madman. Do you think that's fair? Well, there's no question that white nationalism is condoned at the highest levels of our government. You know, uh, when this kind of rhetoric uh, happened 20 years ago, when David Duke was trying to run for office as a Republican, the Republican Party was horrified. They couldn't run away fast enough. Right now, you see it being echoed by the White House, and uh, there is a measure of responsibility that you just can't get away from. When you have, uh, you know, case after case of racial rhetoric coming out of the White House. And then when you have an actual incident of white nationalist terrorism like the killing in Charlottesville uh, related to people saying Jews will not replace us and the president saying he got very fine people there, of course this is part of a climate where people who are in the grip of this hateful extremist ideology feel validated and they feel validated from all the way at the top and that is part of our problem. We must stop the glorification of violence in our society. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. Video games are not to blame for shootings or assaults or hate crimes. They are not that influential. My college boyfriend played Mortal Kombat all the time and he never learned how to finish me. <laughs> Even 
And the Supreme Court has called bullshit on the link between video games and violence, but the entertainment industry has always been an easy target for politicians trying to blame someone for violence. In the 90s, it was action movies. In the 80s, it was heavy metal. In the 50s, it was comic books. And obviously, the Civil War would never have happened if it wasn't for those violent chess sets. <laughs> for those who still somehow don't get the link between guns and gun violence, a review by the Harvard School of Public Health found that, surprise, we're the there are more guns, there is more homicide. That research was the biggest waste of Harvard-educated minds since the writer's room at Two and a Half Men. It's so painfully, stupidly obvious that guns cause gun violence, yet Republicans keep trying to find any other cause, no matter how nonsensical. Representative Candace Keller from Middletown posted this now-deleted message on Facebook blaming the recent shootings on gay marriage, drag queen advocates, and recreational marijuana. She also appeared to point blame at former President Barack Obama and football player Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> Police say two people were arguing on Renwick Avenue when one of them pulled out a gun and started shooting. The victim was hit twice before pulling out their own gun and returning fire, then driving to a gas station. Police are still looking for the suspect. In California, which has had some of the strictest gun laws in the country, had eight mass killings this year, the most of any state. Many people we talked to felt sad and shocked. I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. Um, how do you teach respect for life? And just under an hour ago, police identified him as well as every victim. We will not be broadcasting the name of the gunman in an effort not to glorify him, but the victims are identified as his sister, Megan Betts, 22 years old, Lois Oglesby, 27, Saeed Saleh, 38, Derek Fudge, 57, Logan Turner, 30, Nicholas Coomer, 25, Thomas McNichols, also 25, Beatrice Warren Curtis, 36 years old, and Monica Brickhouse, 39. All of this unfolded just hours after a gunman stormed a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, killing 20 people and injuring 26 more. He surrendered to police before they ever fired a single shot. Investigators confirmed they're investigating a manifesto that shooter allegedly wrote filled with anti-immigrant rhetoric. Federal officials say they intend to prosecute this case as domestic terrorism because it fits the criteria an attempt to coerce or intimidate civilians. We are treating it as a domestic terrorism case. Until voters decided they've had enough, we'll keep having incidences like this. Live for us in Modesto tonight with more on the deadly shooting. Rob, what can you tell us tonight? Well, Marissa, the Stanislaus County Sheriff's Office is still appealing to witnesses uh, in that shooting that left three people injured and one man dead. Now, neighbors are concerned because this all took place in the broad daylight. A series of pow, 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 pow. <laughs> Jeanette Moore says the gunfire came from this house on Modesto's Vernon Avenue, 430 Friday, where police responded and found four shooting victims. I seen they took one away with a foot wound and a hand wound. The one that was on the floor, he, he didn't look like he was going to survive. Two men and one woman needed medical attention. A fourth man drove himself to the hospital. One man was later pronounced dead. Yeah, we're getting nervous. Nervous for good reason, Jeanette says the bullets in broad daylight could have gone anywhere. It could ricochet, come into our house, kill one of the kids. It's just, you know, it's frightening. You don't know who's out here anymore. Over the years, she says violence has plagued the street. At the end of the lock sits a memorial to the lives that have been lost. You know, we've been here 25 years. You just can't get up and move. You just hope that it goes away somewhere else.